Now we begin with Chapter 8 of our Windows Server 2012 tutorial. This time, we'll further discuss Active Directory account creation automation. I'll show you how to use DS Add and PowerShell. I'll also show you how to use CSVDE and LDIFDE, although these two tools are not commonly used anymore. So first, we discuss important things about LDIFDE and CSVDE. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to export using LDIFDE and CSVDE so that you'll have an idea on the structure of the export data, which is important in importing data. So here's a sample export command structure that I've made here, which will give you an output that looks like this. The only difference in exporting between LDIFDE and CSVDE is the export file name and the command name. So basically they're just the same. Now I'm going to show you how to do an import using CSVDE. I've already prepared a comma separated value file or CSV file right here, which I created using Excel. So basically, the parameters in the first line are the column headers, and the succeeding lines are the values that cor correspond to it. So our objective is to place all those new users in an empty directory right here using this command. Now, CSVDE is the command. I stands for import, F for file, next one is the path, then J is for the log file location, and then the directory without specifying any file. Now let me remind you that the accounts that it creates doesn't have any password, which may be helpful if you're just creating accounts in advance for future users. Now we move to DS Add. I have here an existing structure. And I want to create a better structure for this using DS Add. So we can use OU for organizational unit, or you could use user if you want to create a user, or group if you want to create a group account. Now, I just created a bat file right here that would create a whole structure of Hoyt, that's the name of my organizational unit, and inside it, it will have trainees, Hoyt admin, and inside trainees is OJT. So we run the file as an administrator and then it will create the organizational structure. Now I'm just gonna add a pause in the bat file for me to see if there are any errors in the creation of the organizational structure. And we're gonna need to refresh in order to see the created files. Note that in using VS add command, the objects created are not protected from accidental deletion. But you can change that by enabling advanced features and then change the property of the object. Next, I'm going to show you a spreadsheet that I've prepared which will allow us to create multiple accounts and automatically put them into a specific organizational unit. Notice that the dsAd statement appears differently in the formula. This is because I used the function concatenate which combines multiple parameters together. The first parameter is a plain text value, which you see here as DS add user cd equals. The second parameter came from the value of a2, and then two more domain controller text values. I've also added parameters like user principal name, display name, password. Also, you might want to take note that the password it creates here are visible. Then here, it requires them to change their password on their first login. Then the home directory. This is where you store your data files, so instead of storing it in a local computer, it will be stored in a central storage server. Here it is matched to a drive letter, which in this case is E. This here points to a profile directory, which is not re really required, but this keeps a copy of all user settings to the server, which may be helpful if you log in from another computer. And lastly, the member column which indicates the object the user belongs to. Now, to automate the account creation, what we're going to do is to use the autofill function of Excel to fill out the other cells. In this case, I filled out 25 user accounts, which then creates auto-incremented username values. After that, we need to combine all of them to a single statement using the autofill and the concatenate functions of Excel. So here I concatenated columns B2 through J2, then use the autofill function to fill out the rest. Then we need to copy all these concatenated lines to a notepad and save it as a batch file or BAT file. And I'm just going to add the pause statement that I've said earlier. 
And the last thing we need to do is to run it as an administrator again and wait a few seconds for it to create the accounts. So it now created all those accounts in just a few seconds, saving me time and effort. Now if you want to put real names instead of default name, you can just change the values in column A and it will automatically change the values in the other columns. You can also use other tools like DS Query together with DS Mod or DS Get using the pipe command. Let me show you an example. Here I'm going to show you DS Query when we're looking for a user in an organizational unit sample users with domain components sample and com. And then you're just going to add the hyphen add MBR and then use the pipe command which takes the result of the DS query and sends it to the next command which then modifies the group membership puts them into a common name sample users in the OU also sample users and the domain component sample and com then hyphen add MBR now we've added all the users to the sample user security group now if you want to remove all those members you can just replace the hyphen add MBR with RMMBR another thing to take note is that what we're doing here is potentially destructive so be sure that you know what you're doing before executing any commands it would be advisable to test it in a lab environment first before in an office environment this is to avoid data loss you can also use DS query together with DS get for example if you want to look for a user from a domain with any username that has sample user in it and I want to see what department they belong this is the command I'll use after that it will show you to what department they belong Now let's try to move a portion of an organizational structure. You could see sample users right here, but I want to put it inside the data entry organizational unit. So you're going to need to execute the command right here, again as an administrator. After that, you can refresh and look at the data entry organizational unit, and you can see there that sample users is right there. But if you want to specify a new name for sample users, you can just type this command right here, which will change my current sample users to DE user. Now, if you want to remove the entire DE user directory, you can just type this command right here. You can also add the no prompt command if you want to say yes to everything. Then after you refresh, you're going to see that DE users is gone from the data entry organizational unit. And if you want to use PowerShell, what you really need are some PowerShell commandlets and the CSV file, which is the source data for the accounts that we're going to create. Now here's a useful PowerShell commandlet. These are all the available tips for this specific commandlet. Here, you could see that you could use new add user. To enter all these types of attributes to a user account. Next I'm going to show you another CSV file that I've created right here. You'll notice that it's like the one we created earlier just with additional attributes. Now we're going to use this script to look and extract the data inside the CSV file. What the first line of the script does is that it calls the commandlet import CSV and then calls for the data that we need, which is users.csv. And then the dot backslash means that it will be executed in the same directory as the script. Then we'll pipe it together with for each object, which basically creates loops like ones in programming. It executes the commands in closing braces for every line in the CSV file. What the rest of the script does is that it's going to create a user principal name which consists of the things inside the SAM account name plus the domain component. Then it will create a new Active Directory user, SAM account name, with the following parameters. 
Some account name will contain the contents of some account name column in the CSV file. And name will contain all the contents of the name column in the CSV file, and so on and so forth. The dollar underscore dot here works like in PHP. It means whatever is in or the contents of. You should also note that PowerShell doesn't like an insecure string. So what I did here is that I converted it into a secure string, which is not exactly secure because it's in plain text right here, then forced it to plain text using hyphen force. This password creation method might not exactly be recommended, but this might come in handy for you. Now we just need to run the script in PowerShell and again run it as an administrator using this command and finish the account creation. Then you can now refresh and view the new users. Now that ends chapter 8 of our Windows Server 2012 tutorial. For more videos, check out this link right here.